This is Ace and Friends. Episode 5 of the Ace and Friends podcast. I am the modern day Mr. Rogers. My name is Ace. I don't use that often enough. I've got to start using it more often if it's going to catch on. Don't sit there and don't smile, Riggins. It's, it's t-shirts that I got, a, I, got a, I got a line plan for it here. Really? Yeah. I got a, like we'll put my face on Mr. Rogers' body. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they'll like, love that. Like yes, Ace and Friends. Yeah. Can I use it as likeness? Um, I, look, normally we kind of start you off with some things to talk about for the day, whatever, you know, three things you need to know, that kind of stuff. But I have an idea that has occurred to me that I will grant you is a bad idea. So let me start with a member of the radio family named Eric, who sent a DM last night, or this morning, rather, that said... That clip of Ace and that LSU poem has got to be the funniest thing I have ever heard on this show since I've been listening, and I've been listening for years. That was Wednesday's edition of the Ace and Friends podcast, where I was unable to read the uh, the poem about uh, uh, LSU football. Saturday Night in Death Valley is the name of it, because I first became familiar with it, familiarized with it because of a video that LSU did that I probably watch. I don't know at least once a month realistically several times almost once every 10 days probably I could go, let me check that again. i gotta love it i love it that much but today i have i just read something a little while ago and i thought well that's interesting i wonder this could replace that as the funniest thing you've ever seen or heard on anything when it comes to the ace and tj show you know this is the first week of the ace and friends podcast I, mean, I don't want to come out of the gate too hard, but 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 what happens if we blow it out in the first week? We give you the two funniest things that ever occur on this show. And it starts with a man named Tom Brady. Yep, that Tom Brady. What is he, six, seven? How many Super Bowls? Seven? Oh, I don't know. It's a lot. That, that he won. I think he won six. But something recently came out about Tom Brady. <clears throat> and... Tom Brady, when he went to the NFL Combine, which is going on right now, and if you don't know, the NFL Combine is where players go and perform different tasks, different skills, different tests to be judged, and, and, and it helps them uh, find a spot to be drafted for NFL teams. Uh, in 2000, when Tom Brady was at the NFL Combine, he ran the 40-yard dash in 5.28 seconds coming out of college at the University of Michigan. Well, now some 24 years later, at the age of 46, he just ran the 40-yard dash again. He's actually faster now than he was then. He was clocked at 5.18. One, one, one stopwatch clocked him at 5.12, but he was clocked at 5.18 seconds. Whoa. It's not a, it's not a barn burner time. No. But he's but the fact that he's faster twenty four years later than he was at the age of twenty two is hard to believe. Yeah. And that got me thinking. Hmm. What I'm thinking coming up next. Hang on. Well, here we are, another new year, and you're again gonna try to lose that weight you've been needing to lose for a long time. Well, here's what you need. You need Calatron to help. Because Calatron is not a drug. No, not at all. It is natural and effective. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight and get better sleep. When you buy three months supply of Calitrin, you will get three months free right now. And consistency is the key with Calitrin. So order it today at acetj.com slash weight loss. It's Calitrin. All guests of the Ace and TJ show stay at the Hyatt centric Charlotte South Park. Beautiful rooms, incredible dining options. Book your room by calling 980-299-7123. It's the Hyatt-centric Charlotte South Park. The Johnson Group has been cleaning some of Charlotte's most prestigious businesses since 1985. Family owned and operated. Learn more at acetj.com slash clean. It's first class cleaning with the Johnson Group. Ace and Friends. All right, so Tom Brady ran the 40-yard dash at the NFL Combine in 2000 in 5.28 seconds. He's a tenth of a second faster now that he's 46 years old. Um, he just ran it again in 5.18. Now, he's known for, well, and if you've ever seen anything about Tom Brady, one of the pictures that it goes around every year is this picture of Tom Brady in shorts 
uh, that was taken at the NFL Combine. Yeah. It's just him in shorts, shirtless. They do this for every player. And he is not a physical specimen by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he's in much better shape today than he was then. I don't know today that you, if you see Tom Brady's shirts, I don't think he's shredded or anything like that. He's probably in pretty good shape, but um, but it, it's shocking that 24 years later he's he's a tenth faster. That's crazy. And I started wondering, Tom Brady's 44, 46. I'm 55. How close could I get to Tom Brady's NFL Combine time? If I ran the 40-yard dash today, right now, on the Ace and Friends podcast, how close could I come to his NFL combine time of 5.28? Hmm. Do you think you can get close to that? I don't know. I don't think so. Because I did a leg workout two days ago. My hamstrings are pretty sore. He's you're already making excuses. <laughs> that was quick. <clears throat> yeah. you, I'm not fast. I've never been fast. Okay. I've I've never been, even when I was young and 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 skinny and all. I was I've never been fast. It's forty yards. Forty yards. Do you Five think there's seconds? Do you think there's forty yards in the parking lot out here? I oh yeah. Don't know. I have no idea. I've uh, on the side here. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You think that's forty yards? I would imagine. Oh yeah. In five seconds, there's no way. No, I, I wonder if I could break six seconds. I don't think you can break ten. You don't think I can run four yard dash in ten seconds? Dang. I, I, I honestly, I'm basing that on nothing, not having having ever seen you run. Okay, so let's go. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do do a little stretch. Okay. Here's what I think we should do. Rob, you come run the controls. Okay. We'll get Riggins on audio. You and you can. Uh, can you talk to Rob in video at the same time? I don't. If, if I got like two phones. Maybe. Yeah, we figured out. We're gonna make it work. Okay. okay. Let's go put it to the test. Okay. All right, we're gonna do this. Coming up next on the Ace and Friends podcast. Ace and Friends. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong. Because this year, you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. Attention Charlotte, treat yourself to a delicious meal that's made with fresh, seasonal ingredients and ready in just 20 minutes. Enjoy a fine dining experience without ever leaving your home. Head over to tableandtwine.com. Currents is Lake Norman's number one lifestyle magazine. Every month, Currents brings you the latest news on what's happening in the Lake Norman area. They've been serving the Lake Norman community for over 13 years. See the latest issue of Currents now at lncurrents.com. Ace is testing out 40 yards. He thinks he has 40 yards. Mine is. Okay, so we've moved outside. First ever time we've been outside on the Ace and Friends podcast. And we have marked off roughly 40 yards here in the parking lot. Yeah. And so I really haven't stretched. My hammies are hurting because I'm sore. So I'm going to go down there 40 yards away. And then, what, you'll just click it off when I take off running? Yeah. Okay. And then they're going to time it. The goal is to see if we can, how close I can come to Tom Brady's time in uh, in 2000. Yeah. Okay. And, yes, I have this shirt because I'm going to the gym right after here today. So, yeah, you were ready. I, nah, I wasn't ready for this. Take my jacket, Rob. Okay, here we go. All right, so Ace is running down to the other end. He's already making excuses. Oh, he's stretching his arms. <laughs> okay. I don't want to scream into this phone. Do you want me to count you down? All right. In. All right. In three, two, one. There he goes. Oh, he's running. Oh. Look at him. Ace is flying. He's flying. He's flying. And he's grinding. <laughs> Not, I don't want to give you your number unless you're ready for it. Ace is winded. Ooh. 
It's uneven ground. <laughs> it's uneven. And it pitches off to the right and it picks up speed going downhill. There. How bad was it? I can do better than that. All right. There's the number. 10 seconds. 10.81. 10.81. I... <laughs> okay, never mind. Here, let's go back. I'm very disappointed today. <laughs> Uh, or, or you're, you were pushing hard there at the end too. We're just gonna get well because it's it's not level ground. It fades off to the right and then it goes downhill at the end. I gotta stop before I hit a dumpster. <laughs> Excuses is fine. Well, and I don't know when y'all started the timer. I so got it right. no, I, got it right. I feel like I've been cheated a little bit here. Okay, but we're gonna maybe take this mobile one day and go to a track or something yeah. and try it. The controversy surrounds this. <laughs> All right, either way, I don't feel good. We'll make you feel better. The good news is next. Hang on. Back again with our friend Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Now, uh, Richard, tell us about this cash out equity thing, instant cash, add water, and there it is. It is. It, it, that's how it is. Instant <laughs> equity. I mean, you, t you do the application today. You could close today and get your money in five days. There's no underwriting. There's no appraisal. You know, I think somebody went, didn't you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly yeah. what I did. Instant equity. <laughs> it's very easy. And Richard yeah. walks you through the process. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. Our nation's second president, John Adams, always slept on the left side of the bed. He believed this would increase his chances of having positive dreams and a more successful next day. That's why every mattress we sell here at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress includes a left side. And for those that prefer waking up on the right side of the bed, our mattresses come with one of those too. This President's Day, you can save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic sets. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. There's a lot of news out there, but Ace and Friends just want to give you the good news. Today's good news is kind of all over the place. Let's start with a lady in North Carolina who volunteered to be a foster for a local humane society. And she said she'd take part, take pets in. I'll take some pets in temporarily. Yeah, this is what happens to a lot of people. As soon as she stepped foot in the place, she fell in love. Walked right back out with a dog named Rookie, who now has his forever home. So she was going to just temporarily take in some dogs here and there. And now she's got a brand new dog. Cops in Florida rescued a missing five-year-old girl with autism this week. She'd wandered away from her home. They spotted her from the air walking around a swamp. Um, the, the body cam footage, if you get a chance, go check it out online. The body cam footage is phenomenal. They were great with her. They were excited to see her, and she was very, very happy to see them. So great work by the police there. And a World War II vet in Pennsylvania named Ralph Perkner turned 103 this week, and he credits his longevity to having daughters. He's got three of them, and he told a reporter that having three daughters always made him, his words, stronger, end quote. And that is the good news. Ace and Friends. It's a new year, which means new you. No, not if you've got nagging pain. That means we won't old you. Old you before you had that pain. And it's possible without surgery, without medication, without downtime. Thanks to Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic. I am a Neogenics client. I am a Neogenics lover because they fixed my left wrist. And you can get a free consultation right now. Call 704 727 6551 or online at acetj.com slash neogenics. N E O G N I X. Bradham Brothers offers heating, air, and electrical installation and service that you can trust. Their family business has served thousands of customers with honesty and a smile for over 50 years. Go to bradhambrothers.com to schedule service or a free estimate today. This is Ace and Friends. Have you been watching? Vanderpump Rules, Riggins. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I'm turning the wrong mics on. My bad. Yeah, no, I haven't been watching yeah. it this season, but I, I've... Hang on. Let's start over. I don't like yeah. it. I had the wrong mic. Sorry. Here we go. This is Ace and Friends. So you've just kind of been keeping up with Vanderpump Rules, right, Riggins? Yeah. All right. So this became, obviously, scandal of all. Yeah. A big scandal at the end of last year. Um, I have not really watched. I watched a little bit of it the other day with Amanda. And she said it's not that good because they're still trying to find a way to milk it. Yes. And there's not much there for them to milk at this point. And they're just, that it's just dragging and it's just all not really going anywhere because they're just trying to milk the scandal more. And it seems like it's hurting them more than it's helping them, I would think. I agree. But there is something that has come out. Kind of one of those things just to be aware of for the weekend. Uh, turns out that Rachel, who used to be called Raquel, 
This is the woman that Tom Sandoval uh, cheated on Ariana with. She is now suing Tom and Ariana. Yeah. Claiming that, if I understand this correctly, she claims that he recorded two FaceTime videos of her uh, performing for him, for his pleasure, in a solo act, that he recorded them on his phone and showed others. Wait, not that he showed others, that Ariana found them and Correct. she showed other people. Correct. So she's filed suit, like under a revenge porn type of law. Yeah. That's kind of the 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 route that she's taking is that, hey, Ariana's uh, been involved in revenge porn. Recorded without her knowledge and then spread around. Spread around to the cast, not not to the general public, but that the cast has seen these moments that she did not know were recorded. Correct. And she has filed suit against both Tom and Ariana. Yeah. And Ariana hates Tom. Tom doesn't like Ariana, but now they may have to join forces to fight this this lawsuit. Yeah, it's, it's ugly. And I don't know how the revenge porn law works. First, I'm all for that law. I think that's a terrible, terrible, disgusting thing to do to decide to get back at somebody. So I'm going to put this out here, someone that someone shared with you intimately. But in this case, she said she didn't know she was even recorded. Yeah. Much less to know that Ariana was going to find them and go out and share them with people. Uh, especially other cast members on the show. Yeah. And then that is uh, also what apparently led to, she believes, led to her being punched by Sheena, which split her head open, split her eye open, and she had to get a restraining order and blah, 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 yeah. blah, which was all a big part of the, the reunion last year. And they never really talked about the details of that incident. And now it's clear kind of why. Yeah, I don't think they can talk about yeah. the details of that particular incident now. I mean, it's a mess. It's a real mess now. I mean, obviously, if you're the people at Bravo, you're like, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, anything to stoke the fire a little bit. But it's not anything that's probably going to be discussed on this edition of the of the show because Rachel's not on the show anymore. She's not. She's refusing to participate in the show anymore. Yeah. And they're not going to openly discuss a lawsuit like that because they all need to what could be called into court over the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That is wild. Yeah, though. it's a mess. But yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the revenge porn law. I think it's terrible that somebody would do that just to get back. You 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 cheated on me. You hurt me. Whatever. So I'm going to go show the world this thing that you did in an intimate moment just for me. I think that's a, a horrible thing. Yeah, for sure. But there is a lady who. <laughs> who found her dream match on Tinder, or so she thought. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest, funniest stories. Guarantee it's something you'll be able to share this weekend. Coming up next. Ace and Friends. Well, here we are, another new year, and you're, again, going to try to lose that weight you've been needing to lose for a long time. Well, here's what you need. You need Calitrin to help. Because Calitrin is not a drug. No, not at all. It is natural and effective it's scientifically proven to help you lose weight and get better sleep when you buy three months supply of calitrin you will get three months free right now and consistency is the key with calitrin so order it today at acetj.com slash weight loss it's calitrin should you buy should you sell how do i present my house if i do want to sell it all of those questions can be answered by the experts and they can take care of you with the temple team at keller williams realty the temple team knows everything there is to know about selling marketing and buying houses so get in touch with them today at acetj.com slash temple team the temple team at keller williams realty ace and friends Obviously, I'm not out of the dating world, but I see all these types of stories all the time. A lot of women post about how difficult it is to date, how hard it is to find a good guy, how weird things get sometimes. And, and this is one of those cases where you read a story like this and go, oh, I get it. So, Riggins, explain this. So you found this story and yeah. brought it to my attention. So explain how this works. Girl matches with a guy. It's her dream guy. Handsome. Yeah. Seems like he's got it all together. They've been talking for a while. He says, let's go to dinner. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Price not an option. Not an issue. And she picks a very uh, high-end seafood restaurant. They go. Apparently have a great time. The next day, he texts her and says, hey, uh, could you help me out and loan me like $320 because I need to uh, pay off an electricity, get my lights turned back on. 376.54 is what 376.54. Yeah. It shouldn't be a problem because I paid for your seafood boil. 
That is literally what he texted her. Hey, we've been talking for a while, and I was wondering if I could get $376.54 to get my lights turned back on. Figured it wouldn't be an issue since I paid for your seafood boil. LOL. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what? Laugh out loud. <laughs> And she's like, uh, do you ever respond? Her response was kind of funny. She was like, oh, yeah, uh, no, good luck with everything. And then she blocked him, which is the appropriate response to that, obviously. I mean, that it's it's fascinating what some people think is OK and acceptable, even more fascinating why they think it's OK. Yeah. So he thought it was OK to say, hey, can you, I mean, I bought your seafood bowl. So you could this is like almost like this is the least you could do for me. Yeah. Three hundred and you owe me seventy five bucks. I highly doubt that her seafood boil was three hundred and seventy six dollars and fifty four cents. Not a chance. Let's say it was a hundred bucks. That's not even a third. No. And it wasn't a hundred bucks, I'll guarantee you that. No. No. So she's like now double devastated because not only is that guy, you know, a weirdo, but she also thought he was like a good dude and like spent all that invested time in talking with him a lot. And then finally going out to dinner only to discover shortly after that, he is just kind of a scumbag. He was very handsome, smart, kind, and he seemed very well put together. He had a similar sense of humor. We got along great. The chemistry was there. Yeah. That's I feel like we were brutal. even. It's brutual. It's brutal. He's like, hey, bar three, seven, six, 54, please. Get my lights turned back on, which means they were off. off. <laughs> why are you take? Why are you telling her I'm gonna take yeah. you out to dinner? Price is no object. Well, meanwhile, his lights are are currently off. Yeah, it's pitch black. He had to go get ready at a friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up on Ace and Friends. Ace and Friends. The story you'll be talking about the rest of the day. You probably haven't heard of this story yet, but it's a mind blower. Going back to high school and those teachers that went the extra mile to help you learn a lesson. This one just went a little bit too far. Next, Ace and Friends. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong, because this year you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. Create an unforgettable experience with the Cabarrus Arena. Learn more at CabarrusArena.com. Weddings, banquets, shows, expos, they do it all at the Cabarrus Arena. Learn more at CabarrusArena.com. Ace and Friends. This is the story you'll be talking about the rest of the day. Now, we do this every day at this time because we want you to either be A, informed about something really important and topical or b just have something fun to share with somebody later tonight you can go, hey did you all weekend now you go hey did you hear about this thing i heard about it on the ace and friends podcast check it out today we're going fun there's no, there's nothing informative about this but this is a wild story great teachers find new and creative ways to help kids learn all right we can all we probably all can think of one teacher at least who did this type of thing but sometimes really bad teachers do it too. A high school in Albuquerque, New Mexico is now dealing with a lawsuit after a chemistry teacher thought that actual sword fights, yeah, letting students have sword fights. She thought that was a good idea. This happened in 2022. The civil suit was just filed. That's why we're just now hearing about it. She was doing a lesson on metal and melding and she brought actual swords to class. One was a thin European style sword rapier r-a-p-i-e-r -E uh the other sword was a samurai sword so she has the students rearrange their desks into a fighting ring in class starts a timer and the students do battle for two minutes with real swords you know why this has turned into a civil suit you know how this ends they got a little too into it a 16 year old girl ended up with a serious gash on her right wrist it severed multiple nerves and tendons and she had to have surgery According to the lawsuit, the teacher yelled out, quote, I'm in trouble, end quote, and told everybody to delete the footage from their phones. And no one called 911 for 30 minutes. She got fired two months later. Uh, the girl's family is seeking an undisclosed sum. I'm in trouble. And then she makes all the kids delete the footage from their phone. Just stunning. They had actual sword fights. You're not any smarter for this story, but that is the story. 
you'll be talking about the rest of the day. Ace and Friends. Well, here we are, another new year, and you're, again, going to try to lose that weight you've been needing to lose for a long time. Well, here's what you need. You need Calitrin to help. Because Calitrin is not a drug. No, not at all. It is natural and effective. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight and get better sleep. When you buy three months supply of Calitrin, you will get three months free right now, and consistency is the key with Calitrin. So order it today at acetj.com slash weight loss. It's Calitrin. As a proven leader in managed IT services, CompuCom delivers innovative solutions designed for how you work today. They'll help you deliver results no matter where you are on your digital transformation journey. It's all at CompuCom. Go to CompuCom.com to find out more. Ace and Friends. So this is episode five of the Ace and Friends podcast. Uh, If you're listening to it live on the Ace and TJ app or you've downloaded it Friday afternoon, Friday evening, kind of the first weekend. So I think it's fun on Friday to look ahead to like some things that you need to know about the weekend. For example, the big movie this weekend is Dune. I'm sorry, it's Dune 2, which is two hours and 45 minutes long. No. Um, Tandy Rob's thinking about going to see it uh, this weekend. Also, I, I saw on TikTok yesterday, Billy McFarlane popped up. He was on being interviewed on, I think it was Daniel Tosh's yeah. podcast. Yep. And he was talking about how much money he still owes, like $26 million from Fire Festival. Yeah. Well... And he pointed out he makes payments every month. He owes it's twenty four to twenty six million that he still owes investors from Fire Crazy. Festival. And because of the court order, every month he has to write a huge check to these people. But he announced yesterday that the sequel is getting even closer to happening. He says the pre sales made a hundred ten million dollars. Ticket price is starting at two thousand five hundred dollars a piece, with the highest access level ticket costing more than a million dollars. He didn't say how many tickets were sold, only that the next time we hear from him, it'll be after his business partners make their official Fire Festival 2 announcement. The festival is supposed to happen in December in the Caribbean. He's going to try to sell those tickets by any means necessary. So he's going to do all these shows. He's going to get on the TikToks and talk about it. Do you think? He hasn't sold any tickets yet. I mean, I guarantee you the numbers are not staggering. But where did the pre? How did the pre-sales make 110 million dollars? Or do you think I, he's lying? I think 100 percent lying, trying to get hype uh, to actually sell tickets. Or is it possible that this is very similar to the people who say, "Or well, you know, if that airline just had a crash, I'm flying that airline. There's no way it's going to crash again. <laughs> like, there's no way it's not going to be. He amazing. doesn't fulfill every obligation to blow Fire Festival to." out of the water make it a massive success yeah like if you if if you expect first class service you're going to get above and beyond first class service because he's got to come back bigger than ever because he can't have a second disaster yeah he literally can't afford it and he would go back to prison yeah so are there people buying in saying there's no way this thing bombs again yeah it's not possible maybe a little morbid curiosity like it's like seeing a dead body like he kind of just i gotta see this thing i I know this thing's gonna work out this time (laughs) <laughs> Have they announced any performers or anything like that? I don't think so. It's just the idea of Fire Festival. It's Fire too. Festival too, and here are your options. You know, a million dollar ticket. I mean, that's solely to get the story in the press. Absolutely, one hundred percent. So 100%. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything past them at this point because we know what a kind of, I don't want to call him a con man because <laughs> that's not a nice thing to do. But I was blown away when I saw that this morning. They've already made a hundred. He, he claims a hundred ten million dollars so far <laughs> in tickets, and I don't think anybody has a clue who's on that on the roster to perform at Fire Festival yeah. too. Would you think. spend? Would you go to that? No. If it was free, I wouldn't. I don't think I would. I for free. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I might go for free. You would because I do think that there's no way it bombs again. There's no way it bombs. You'd, you'd be able to get in and out this time. <laughs> it's not my thing, but you probably it, it, it couldn't be nearly as bad this time around. Yeah. Um, Cat Williams has shown up on another podcast, a big podcast, a huge podcast, and it's, it's getting weird, Mama. Yeah. Next, hang on. Ace and Friends. 
back again with our friend Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Now, uh, Richard, tell us about this cash out equity thing, instant cash, add water, and there it is. It is. It, it, that's how it is. <laughs> instant equity. I mean, you, t- you do the application today, you could close today and get your money in five days. There's no underwriting. There's no appraisal. You know, I think somebody went, didn't you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly yeah. what I did. Instant equity. <laughs> it's very easy. And Richard yeah. walks you through the process. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. Ace and Friends. How long ago that was it that Cat Williams showed up on Club Shay Shay? Oh, a month ago. And how many, what were the, any idea what the total number of views are so far recall. close? I don't recall. But at one point they were over like 15 million in the first weekend or something. Yeah, it, was it was crazy. Everybody crazy wanted to numbers. see it. And it's been chopped up and talked about. It's got to be in excess of 30 million views at this oh, point yeah. on all the different formats and different places. Be. But Cat showed up on the Joe Rogan podcast. Now, is this new? Yeah, yesterday. Okay. I, I thought so, but this one clip looks like it might be a little bit old. I don't know. This is Cat Williams uh, yesterday on the Joe Rogan experience uh, when it when it was first. Everything year. is a formula. Everything is that way. Yeah. And that's one of the, um, you know, the science and math go together with um the occult and alchemy and um all of these things are based on things like like even the smurfs story right the smurfs are based on something well um religious people say oh you can't watch the smurfs because it's bad because they have witchcraft and stuff in there but the whole thing is it's based on this um the homunculus the idea that you can create a human life form without a mother or a father so really that's what the smurfs are based on so <laughs> so who, what what two smurfs do you think got together and had smurfette she was the only female of the smurfs so it's a good question well it's not a question in the smurfs they tell you they tell you that um gargamel made smurfette but you know in somebody's history i don't want to say what race of people or group of people it is but in somebody's history you know there was um this homunculus uh thing like a genetically engineered human life form life form Mm -hmm. creature right whoa and so you know it's spoken of his in history um very sparingly oh i mean what do you make of that well, okay, in his defense, so I have heard, I do remember when the Smurfs first hit and became huge. There were kids whose parents wouldn't let them watch it because they said it, it because it had spells and witchcraft in it. Oh, really? No differently than a lot of parents wouldn't let their kids watch Wizard of Oz because they were witches and wizards and all that kind of thing. Uh, Anything like hum- that, that, I don't know, I've never heard the word humunculus. Hum- hum- H- yeah. Humunculus. Uh, is that a character? That's not a character in this. I, I, I mean, it, when he started talking about it's uh-uh. math is related to the occult. I was like, what? What is going on? That's wild. And the, the interview is like four hours long. And yeah. it's like the entire time. It's like that. That's too much for me. I, I, I might take it in small doses, but I can't take four. I can't take an hour straight of that type of stuff. Yeah. He's talking about like emerald tablets being buried under the paw of the Sphinx, yeah. like three miles under the ground. I mean, it's like every conspiracy theory. All, all rolled together. into one. And he loves them all. He <laughs> believes them all. It's wild. Uh, there is something that Riggins has run across that he shared with me this morning. And I haven't told him this yet, but I, I, I got to go, oh, yeah, I get that. I totally understand that. And I don't think he thinks, I think you think it's weird uh, and that not possible. <laughs> but I kind of get it. Next. More Ace and Friends coming up. Coming up. It's a new year, which means new you. No, not if you've got nagging pain. That means we want old you, old you before you had that pain. And it's possible without surgery, without medication, without downtime. Thanks to Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic. I am a Neogenics client. I am a Neogenics lover because they fixed my left wrist. And you can get a free consultation right now. Call 704-727-6551 or online at acetj.com slash Neogenics, N-E-O-G-N-I-X. This is Ace and Friends. So Riggins sends me random things that he finds for the Ace and Friends podcast to talk about every morning. And one of them was a dad suffering from postpartum depression. Yeah. I get the impression that you think, like, this is stupid. I never heard of that. I I, I never heard of that. The guy wrote this question. He said, I don't know what to do. My son is six weeks now and I feel depressed. Not because of raising, raising a baby is hard. I expected that. I think my wife's PPD, postpartum depression, is rubbing off on me. 
She's been negative ever since the start. The whole pregnancy, she was negative about everything, always complaining about all that she's giving up to be pregnant or how her body looked. I thought it would be better when the baby was born, but now it's emotional breakdowns and her complaining about not being able to live like we used to live. I've never heard anything positive yet. I feel like her attitude is making me sad at times. And it goes on from there. But I've had three kids. I've never really experienced that postpartum depression thing. That's a real thing that women okay. physically experience. But I get what he's saying. If she's not said one positive thing about the, the experience leading up to or after having the baby, I can easily see where he's like, this is supposed to be an incredibly joyous time. And if all she's doing is, for whatever the reason, if all she's doing is complaining, I hate this, I, I miss my old life, blah, 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 I can see where that would make him depressed. Yeah, I can see that. It, it, to me, it, it, it came off as I'm trying to, because postpartum depression is a real thing for women and it's devastating and all that stuff. It kind of seems like he was trying to take ownership of it. When in reality, he was just an irritated by his wife's yeah, attitude. I think what he's saying is it's the uh, the overall malaise, the overall negativity is really mm -hmm. rubbing off him and making I, I, that he's having a very negative experience because she's having a very negative experience. Sure. And I believe that. And like he said, she hasn't said anything positive about it since she got pregnant. Yeah. Negative about her body, negative about how she feels, negative about what's coming up. They have the baby then all of which is understandable to a certain extent. But then after you have the baby, you you bask in the joy of this beautiful child. And it is hard. It's difficult. It's a lot, especially for the mom whose body has gone through all these changes and is now changing yet again. And you're trying to deal with you know, hormones are crazy and all that kind of stuff. But it's rare, I think, that a mom doesn't find anything positive. Yeah. doesn't talk about the joy of holding that child or the look at him smile or look at him laugh or the little things that happen along the way. I can easily see um, why it takes so long for that to rub, how that would rub off on a guy and, and bring him down and mm -hmm. make him feel depressed. And one guy responded to him and said, dads can experience a kind of PPD, postpartum depression, because your testosterone, le your testosterone levels also drop when you have a newborn which could have an effect on your mood. You're not sleeping as often, and especially if you're a significant other. If she's always sad and depressed about everything, it's like, oh, God, why are we even doing this? Yeah. To be happy, ladies. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's your advice? No, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing. You know I mean? but, but if you stay together and you talk about it with each other and you kind of work together, you know, hopefully she can see that there's a lot of great things happening. Mm -hmm. This is a, is a really special exciting time in her life that's easier said than done because she's going through a lot physically yeah and if you're if your baby's ugly you know how much harder it is i didn't think he said his baby was ugly but he if said, your baby's ugly, that's a bummer yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, granted if your baby's ugly that is a bummer <laughs> oh, oh speaking of which i have a really cute baby that doesn't mean i'm always a good dad i made a small i made an, an air in judgment yesterday in front of a bunch of people and it was bad Ooh. next Ace and Friends. Well, here we are, another new year, and you're, again, going to try to lose that weight you've been needing to lose for a long time. Well, here's what you need. You need Calitrin to help. Because Calitrin is not a drug. No, not at all. It is natural and effective. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight and get better sleep. When you buy three months supply of Calitrin, you will get three months free right now and consistency is the key with Calitrin. So order it today at acetj.com slash weight loss. It's Calitrin. This is Ace and Friends. So I've got a seven month old at home. And I, I, I hate having to say this all the time, but I feel like the need, the constant need to put this in context in case somebody doesn't know. Um, my wife is much younger than I am. Uh, I have two kids from a previous marriage. Um, and like my, my son, Cade, is 21. 21 and a half by now. He's closer to 22, I think, than he is at 21, if I were to do the math. And then I have a seven-month-old at home. <sighs> so um, it's a different world now when you have a, a, you have a seven-month-old, and I'm 55. So yesterday, every Thursday, we've been going to swim class. 
which is good for the baby because um, we like to be around water. Uh, like my in-laws have a pool and they teach babies, the baby things like how to flip over on their back or um, not to be afraid of the water, how to find the side and pull yourself up. So because the vast majority of children, if they fall in a pool, they fall within one foot of the side and they could save themselves in many cases if they knew what to do. So it's kind of like that. Uh, so yesterday was the first day that I was in the pool with Dax. And one of the things you do is you go to these different stations. Like at one, they just get used to going under the water. And another one, um, it, they you push them off the side and, and catch them, but teach them hey, turn and, and how their hands to reach for the side of the pool. And another one, they sit there and they take things in and out of a little uh, of a little bucket as they learn to help them understand their balance and all on the edge of a pool. So they kind of get used to what it feels like. Well, I'm in the water. Dax is sitting on the edge. Amanda's seated over there watching about, I don't know, 15 feet away with other parents and everything. First time I've been in the pool with him. She's taken him three times on Thursday. And he's in his little swimsuit. He looks as cute as he can possibly be. And I have the, the bucket with the stuff. And I'm trying to tell him to take this stuff out of this bucket. And so for a brief moment, I took my hand off of his back to grab something out of the bucket to hand to him. And when I did, he leaned back. Luckily, tiny bit of luck, there are tiles that are hard as hell. And then behind that, there's a little drainage thing, this hard rubber mat drainage area. Yeah. When he fell over backwards, the back of his head hit that, hit that rubber mat. Mm -hmm. Softer than the tiles, damn near hard as the floor. Yeah. And instantly he starts crying. Oh, now, he no. ain't cried a bit in the three previous weeks that he's been there. No way. Plus, you know who's sitting 15 feet yeah. away. With other parents. With other parents. <sighs> yeah. Yikes. Loser oh, old dad let him fall over and make a mistake. Yeah. And boom, he bumped his head. What did she say? Was she not happy? Oh, really? Not happy. Oh, come not on. Not happy. Oh, come on. You know, and it didn't help that this little kid was sitting next to her, waiting, looks like a little five year old. So he hit his head hard. Oh, he hit his head hard. <laughs> no. Hey, shut up, and I kid. I go, hey, <laughs> shut up. Lady, shut your kid up. Oh, no. Mommy hit his head hard. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, that's so bad. That's really bad. That's really bad. I mean, that kid was making it worse. Oh, I, obviously. They said it 10 times. He hit his head hard. His head hit hard. Shut up. I never hit my head that hard. Right. Oh, my God. Exactly. It's what, just short of that, Rob. You might as well have said that. I've, nobody's ever let me hit my head like that. Thank God, because my head, I couldn't take it. I have a concussion. Oh, my God. Oh, I bet that hurt. It was brutal. It was just, <laughs> just brutal. Coming up on Ace and Friends. Ace and Friends. So we got to talk to Rob about what he's doing later today. Because Rob's life is fascinating on so many different levels. <laughs> coming up next. More Ace and Friends coming up. Coming up. Back again with our friend Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Now, uh, Richard, tell us about this cash out equity thing, instant cash, add water, and there it is. It is. It, it, that's how it is. <laughs> instant equity. I mean, you, you do the application today. You could close today and get your money in five days. There's no underwriting. There's no appraisal. You know, I think somebody went, didn't you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly yeah. what I did. It's an equity. <laughs> it's very easy. And Richard yeah. walks you through the process. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. Ace and Friends. All right, so we mentioned earlier, uh, Dune 2 is the big movie out this weekend. There's really, I find it interesting. We're still in those days post-COVID. We get like one big movie. Yeah. Uh, like Barbie Oppenheimer is the only time I can think of that there were two big movies opening on the same weekend. Yeah, in 2024, there's been none. Yeah, so Dune 2 opens today. And Rob, you are, uh, well, you're not sure, but you're thinking about going to see it today. I'm pretty sure now. I you're going? I, I think I'm going to go, yeah. Okay. So, so in preparation, you had never seen Dune, so you watched that movie yesterday. That's correct. Dune 2 is two hours and 45 minutes long. That is correct. Okay. Is is this one, or was it the first one that had a cliffhanger? This one had, uh, I think both of them, technically. I, okay. know, I know the first one did. But so think two hours and 45 one. minutes you're going to watch, knowing that you're going to have to come back and watch the third one in a year to figure out the end of this one. Yeah. 
Not happening. Well, that's what he's used to. All those superhero movies do that. <laughs> yeah. They give you that post-credit scene where they're like, they tease the next one. Okay, I'm okay. If, I don't know. Post-credit seems different to me than I know. going in the actual movie itself. It's just going to leave me hanging for another year. Or so. Well, I think they're doing this, too. They're doing that, too. They saw the success of <laughs> the superhero movies. I think there's a post-credit scene in this one. Are you going by yourself, Rob, or going with Meredith? Going by myself. Okay. So it'll be an afternoon movie? Yeah. Do you and Meredith have plans tonight? No, she's out of town. Oh, okay. Again? Yeah. She's a jet setter, man. Yeah, she is. And you are not. That is correct. Are you, what do you have going tonight? Dungeons and Dragons or anything? No. Just going to the movie, coming home. Okay. Nice, quiet night at home playing video games. Yep. And then tomorrow I'm playing a card game, but. All day? Yeah, yeah. probably. Damn, but I'm two hours and 45 minutes in a theater watching a movie, knowing, knowing going in that I'm going to have to come back in a year and watch the next one to figure out what what, what was going on in the, the one I just watched. You say a year, but the first one came out in 2021, so that's three years. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So it might be, it, I don't know. It, the I'm third not. part of a sci-fi political thriller. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, that's, that's, You're not wrong. four <laughs> words. Sci-fi political thriller. <laughs> In the nope. desert. In the desert. <laughs> no, thank you. Coming up on Ace and Friends. Ace and Friends. Oh. For so long, Swifties were outraged that the NFL followers were outraged about Taylor Swift. Well, now, the Swifties are outraged for one of the dumbest reasons I have ever heard in my life. We may need to uh, start a new segment on Ace and Friends called Check. It's, it's time to check yourself. Because <laughs> this is it. Coming up next. Ace and Friends. Well, here we are. Another new year. And you're, again, going to try to lose that weight you've been needing to lose for a long time. Well, here's what you need. You need Calitrin to help. Because Calitrin is not a drug. No, not at all. It is natural and effective it's scientifically proven to help you lose weight and get better sleep when you buy three months supply of calitrin you will get three months free right now and consistency is the key with calitrin so order it today at acetj.com slash weight loss it's calitrin this is ace and friends at ace at large on social media or at ace cannon media at Ace Cannon Media on Instagram. If you want to follow along with Ace and Friends, we're posting clips of the show every day if you miss something, that kind of stuff. And we'll be posting more as we kind of get going with the Ace and Friends podcast. I mean, it's just episode five. We're still sorting it out. And we would love your feedback. You know, at Ace at Large, at Ace Cannon Media, we'd love to hear from you. What you like, what you don't like, what you, any suggestions you may have, um, share away. But I'm fascinated by this story because it's a, a, it, it just shows a group of people who cannot put themselves in a position... They're just so caught up in themselves, they can't understand how stupid they're making themselves look. And in this case, stupid and hypocritical because um, so much of the NFL season was about Taylor Swift and the eyeball she was bringing to the NFL and Swifties, Taylor Swift fans, who we've known for a long time are rabid. Swifties were upset because a lot of NFL fans were sick of hearing about Taylor Swift. Yeah. They were like, Jay, she's doing great things. You leave her alone, she doesn't hurt anybody. Okay, well. Taylor Swift is currently performing in Australia, doing stadiums in Australia. There is a lady who was filmed by someone in the crowd shazamming one of the songs at the Taylor Swift show. <laughs> and they are furious. Yeah. The song is called Champagne Problems. And a woman, a uh, short clip of this lady, quote, frantically looking up the song on her phone, end quote, has gone viral on TikTok. And there's a whole section of Swifties who are furious, complaining that a non-diehard fan scored a ticket to the sold-out era show world tour. <laughs> it's like, how dare she go to see Taylor Swift and not be a hardcore diehard fan? There's a lot of Swifties that weren't able to get tickets, and she's taken up a spot that could have gone to a real fan. It is just one of the dumbest, most petty, unattractive things ever. First off, I don't like people filming other people on their phone at concerts or whatever yeah. or ball games. Like when someone sits behind them and they film them over their shoulder, uh, like some guys looking up, looking at women on his phone, like not taking pictures of women in the audience, but like he's looking up hot women. On his, Leave that dude alone. Yeah. 
If he's not bothering anybody in the game, leave him alone. Or, hey, if, if this is your man, he's texting another woman. None of your business, just mind your business. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's the very thing, you know, so now the hardcore Swifties are mad that somebody who's just a fan got into the show. It's no different than NFL fans being mad because they were sick of hearing about Taylor Swift and the impact she was having on the NFL. You're such hypocrites if you do this. Leave that lady. Plus, that lady's like 50 years old. She's older. <laughs> She's an older lady. Leave her alone. <laughs> she should know champagne problems, though. Come on. It's a big one. She might be there with her kid and be like, hey, I want to I wanna look this song up later because I like this particular song. Yeah. It's just dumb. It's so dumb. <laughs> I get it. And hypocritical. And, and, and it makes you look petty and small. Yeah. Then again, you're probably 14. Yeah. So <laughs> that could be the, yeah. the root of the issue. could be the yeah. fact that you're 14. Um, I, there is something I was reminded of. It happened to Riggins the other day. It reminded me of an incident that I was caught up in once that I don't know if everybody who listens now may know. A little piece of classic Ace and TJ lore from many, 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 many years ago in my life. Next. More Ace and Friends coming up. Coming up. Back again with our friend Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Now, uh, Richard, tell us about this cash out equity thing, instant cash, add water, and there it is. It is. It, 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 that's how it is. <laughs> instant equity. I mean, you, you do the application today. You could close today and get your money in five days. There's no underwriting. There's no appraisal. You know, I think somebody went, didn't you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly yeah. what I did. Instant equity. <laughs> it's very easy. And Richard yeah. walks you through the process. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. Ace and Friends. Riggins, what day was it you had Jehovah's Witnesses come door to door to your house? I think Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, I, I, the last person that came to my door like that was a kid in my neighborhood whose football went over into my little back area of my, of my townhouse. And I am telling him, hey, man, don't worry about that. You never have to come knock on the door to go back. I yeah. appreciate you. You were very kind to knock. But don't sweat. If your bottle goes in there, just go through the gate. It's no big deal. Yeah. Plus, I mean, literally, it's an area about as big as this desk. So, you know, it's, <laughs> but yeah, cool. it reminded me of, and I know, I think you'll, you you know this story, Riggins. I don't know if you do, Rob. The time that I came home and. Yes, I do remember. <laughs> the door-to-door -door salesperson was in my house. The vacuum, right? Yes, yeah, selling vacuum cleaners. Yes. <laughs> it's a good story. I got home. <laughs> and it was probably 6.45 in the evening. And uh, my ex-wife had let a door-to-door -door vacuum salesperson in because um, she felt bad for her. Because the woman had been dropped off in our neighborhood at the house. And she'd gone to the couple of houses, I guess, and she kind of like, she looked like she needed some help. So I offered her water. Like, and she's not wrong. She did look like she needed help. And my ex-wife did it out of the goodness of her heart. But I come in through the garage, and they're there standing in our bedroom, the, the, which was right off, the, off the, the living room in the garage. And I open the door, and I'm standing in the laundry room, and I look through, I can see into the bedroom, and there's a huge pile of dirt laying on the floor of my bedroom. And I'm like, who is who is this person in my house? With what has she got? Oh, that's a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and uh, my ex-wife comes out and she says, "I um, this lady's showing me a vacuum cleaner." I said, "I gathered that." Yeah. It's almost seven o'clock. Yeah. If memory serves me correctly, I know this much. I said, "Look, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not. I don't. No. We're not buying a vacuum cleaner. It's just too expensive. Anyway, I'm gonna go put my stuff upstairs in the office. I got a couple things to do." She's like, I've already, you've got a, a, a plate in the, in the microwave or whatever. So I came in, I sit down and start eating. And this lady's trying to talk to me about vacuum cleaners. I'm sitting at the kitchen table. I'm like, I'm, just, I'm sorry, we're really not interested in vacuum cleaners. And she said, would well, you, do you mind if I sit down? I'm waiting on my ride to come get me. I'm sorry, what? She sits down in my chair while I'm eating food for the night and proceeds to fall asleep in my chair. It's like 7.30 at this point. I've probably been home 45 minutes. She falls asleep and slept there for an almost an hour. And I don't know what to do because she doesn't have a way to get, like she has nowhere to go. Yeah. It's 8.15. And you just waited. 20? And you just waited. She's just sitting there sleeping. And I told my ex-wife, I said, hey, all right. We've reached the end 
point of this right. little soiree. Time to go. And I, I, that might not have been long. It might have been about 8 o'clock. She might have slept for about 30 minutes. She dozed off in the chair. I was like, all right, it's 8 o'clock. She's out of the house. And I finally told her, I said, hey, look, I got, we got stuff to do. I get up very early, so we're kind of winding down for the night. So I'm going to uh, – I hope your ride comes soon, but I'm going to need you to go ahead and take your stuff, and you're welcome to sit at the end of the driveway. Yeah. Which she did. Now, shockingly, as soon as she went to the end of the driveway, the, the car came up and the van came along and picked her up and took her off. So the, the van was just driving around, dropping people off in different little neighborhoods that were close to each other. Goodness. And they were going door to door selling vacuum cleaners. Oh. That's crazy. Still didn't make it. She was like, I really need to make a sale. I bet you do. Well, I really, you really don't need to make a sale here. Yeah. We got to get her on the podcast. I would love to check in with her. That late, uh, yeah. I, I don't think it could be good. <laughs> Nothing good could come from that, I don't think. More Ace and Friends coming up. Coming up. It's a new year, which means new you. No, not if you've got nagging pain. That means we won't old you. Old you before you had that pain. And it's possible without surgery, without medication, without downtime. Thanks to Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic. I am a Neogenics client. I am a Neogenics lover because they fixed my left wrist. And you can get a free consultation right now. Call 704 704- 727-6551 or online at acetj.com slash neogenics, N-E-O-G-N-I-X. This is Ace and Friends. Well, we have reached the end of the first week of the Ace and Friends podcast. And I mean, as we work through everything and kind of get a good system going and all that kind of stuff, because it's, it's a very, um, our working situation, we won't get into all the details, but it's, all, it's very unique and, and weird at the moment. Everybody trying to sort out how all of this stuff works at different times of the day and everything. But thanks for participating. Thanks for checking out the Ace and Friends podcast. We want to hear from you. Um, let's do this. Highlight of the day for you today, Riggins, would be what? You thinking that you could uh, run a 40. Okay, hang on a second. I didn't think I could. I was curious how I could do. And you were indignant when I said <laughs> about 10 <laughs> seconds I thought it would take. Well, uh, uh, fair. That's fair. I was a little indignant. I was not running on a level surface, <laughs> and that was difficult. I understand. And I, understand. I had to slow down before the finish line or run into a dumpster. Yeah. On Literally. a downhill slope. Literally, that's true. So, not metaphorically. Yeah, we may have. <laughs> I may. I may put this to the test and come back another day. I may. Yeah. I, may I may. I may get get my son to go with me one day. We'll actually go to a track for forty yards where it's flat and see. Probably and the, stretch and do it all. I can probably shave. Half a second off the top. Yeah. <laughs> does, uh, does, does Jenny's gym have, have a thing outside you could do it? No, it does not. Uh, you know what it might? Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. I, I, yes, it does. I, I could do it on the, they have the, the, the what do you call it? The turf. The turf. I almost called it the tarp. I can't even think now. I'm so tired after running 40 <laughs> yeah. yards earlier. Uh, Rob, highlight of the day, highlight of the week. It's either that or the, the I still love the vacuum story. <laughs> that's, that's one of my oh, favorite yeah. That's it's it's a classic. classic. I mean, there's nothing like walking in and looking down, and there's two inches of dirt piled up on the floor in your in your bedroom, and some lady standing there with a huge hose going, "Why don't you pick this right up?" <laughs> like, who who is this person in my house at seven o'clock at night showing off a vacuum cleaner? Cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, and that would be was that your highlight of the week, Riggins? Would be what? Um, you crying over yeah. the LSU poem? It's gonna be hard to beat. Yeah, that was good. That's gonna make the the best of. Yeah. What did you like this week? None of it, really. None of it. <laughs> all the things involve you being so, yeah, humiliated. I kind of thought it all sucked. If yeah. you're asking me, so uh, we'll try again next week. See you later. Ace and Friends.